got our shock bolt here. Let's go ahead and get our the shock in its mouth. Nice KYB here. And we'll go ahead and uh, get this up. Here's our package there. Instructions. I hope we don't need those. We'll line that up in our our hole. All right. We'll go ahead. We're not four wheel drive, so we'll put the bolt in or the head this way. Where are you? There we go. Make sure I got the right bolt here. I think that's the right one. Find out. There's two of them. That's weird. All right, and I believe, let's see here. Ow, my legs killed me. I can see how being on a lift would make this a little bit easier. Not an option at the moment, but hey, down the road, who knows? Uh, that's a 21 millimeter, which is somewhere else, apparently. Hello? Ah, there he is. All right, so, tighten that down. It's a half inch. Stop it. There's that. Put our adjustable wrench on this side. There we go. Try it this way here. A little awkward there. Oh, see, yeah, I tell you what, folks, you just gotta be, you just don't know how it is. See, I've got the shock lined up here, but I don't have my rubber mount, I don't have the metal plate. I would not recommend me to work on your car. Okay, so good idea, bad idea at the same time. All right, do this right for one, good grief. All right. Plate. Rubber mount, make sure your shoulder is up. That shoulder will go up into the uh, metal here and mount like it's supposed to. Okay, now we can put this on like it's supposed to be. Good gravy. Alright, basically it's a cool day here in Florida. Very, very comfortable. Go ahead and tighten this in down here, pretty close to tight. Because it'll, it'll still move as a rubber rubber mount within the controller. So you get this tightened down, it's still gonna move back and forth. Which is kind of an ingenious idea to think about. Alright. There's that. I'm gonna go ahead just so we don't stress that shock and jack up the controller. Now the nut for the uh, for this shot is a 14 millimeter, so I just use a gear wrench. Yeah, I got to put this in a little bit. Closer I can get to the Closer we can get to here, the better it'll be. There you go. That pulls up our shock a little bit more naturally. And now, you can put another rubber up here. It's already compressed. Put some anisees on there. There you go. A little bit tight hand-wise here, but this is life. I forgot anisees. Long as I'll forget anything. Think of chip. Look at that. Anybody knows where the Plinko chip reference is from? 
make sure you uh, comment that in the comments because where else would you leave a comment imagine that all right there we go there's that there's a nut it is a tapered tapered nut or um, lock nut there so make sure you put it on the corresponding side there we go get some of this so that I don't make a bigger mess all over me There we go. And once it starts to twist a little bit, just hold here. There is a um, a um, hex head on the top, so you could actually put a wrench or um, vice grips on the top. But this seems to me a little bit easier with this particular spacing. If any of you have done um, rear shocks on the Firebird, uh, 96 Firebird, like mine, that's a four deal as well. Gotta get the back seat out. Yeah, it's exciting. It sure rides good. I got the KYB adjustable there. Make sure you don't round off your thing. Just gonna wait for this to bottom out here. After this, we'll be ready to just give a, a re-grease to all the exerts. Most of them came filled, obviously, so we'll just put a little bit more on. Make sure we're good there. And then we'll connect our, tighten up our sway bar bolts. Tighten up the tie, inner tie rod in bolts. And we'll crank it up. Let it run. See if it senses these shocks. Before I uh, before I go forward, if it doesn't sense the shocks and it throws the auto ride light, we're going to need to snip this harness and uh, set up our little modules. We're almost there. All right. Ow. That's pretty good. Bicep and shoulder are starting to tell me they're tired of doing this. Wait, wait, wait. There we go. Resistance pays off. All right, we're good. So there's the little module there. Put a little anesthes on those threads again. 
really excited to see how this rides because it was just really um, tossing and it's kind of a handful of drive. Smooth still, but kind of a handful. So we'll put these on and see what they do. All right. So I guess we need to grease first. Oh yeah, tire bar or tire bar or soy link, whatever, whatever this thing is. Ah, Jack's in the way. Oh. Alright, let's do some sway bar wings. There's. Yeah, I made that mistake again. There we go. Spacer. Shoulder. There we go. How do you like that? A little sound effect to make that work with it impressive. I was impressed. Alright, there we go. Oh, I didn't realize how close that was to the oh, brake line. Interesting. Alright, so I've got a 15 millimeter. No, I don't. I've got 9 16. I'm sorry. I'm a lazy bum nowadays, so we're going to do it like this. makes life so easy. Now granted there's still some places where you know good to use it maybe not so good to use it so use those tools with discretion if you're new to the business. If you're not new to working on cars you know exactly what you're doing. I don't need to say anything. All right I'm gonna if I can get this right here with the uh, quarter inch so we'll go ahead and grab those and over here, I'm going to pull in the tie rod in a little bit on the right side. Looks like it's out just a smidge from my unprofessional eye. <laughs> Where's my quarter inch drive? Yeah. All right. Typical. There's that. See if I can speed this up a little bit. Even is good. I had trouble with I think one of the threads were crossed on one of these. I don't remember which one. I think it was that one. Yeah, that's good. You can see there's just not enough room to get the drive up there unless you use the Maybe a swivel. A swivel might work. I think we're getting close to maybe 3 o'clock. Time change is about to go to effect here in Florida, so. Alright, that. Type that the other one. Pardon that, bro. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna pause the camera for a minute, or turn it off actually. I'm gonna go make my adjustments on that side, then we'll crank it up and uh, see what it does. We'll probably fit a tire on both sides. Just kind of look at where the uh, alignment's kind of set and go from there. All right. Oh yeah. Now I'm going ahead and just um, making sure the grease, the zerks are greased. Yeah, 
Yeah, that was pretty empty there. Obviously, we don't want to go in too much, but I'm always terrible at being able to tell what too much is. So I make a mess. Alright, I heard a little glub, a little air pocket, so we'll leave that one. Thankfully, our lower ball joints are very easy to get to. There's that. Go up underneath and check those. So anyways, that looks pretty uh, pretty good at the moment. Clamp our beautiful red calipers here. Using my super clean in the bottle there. Alright, there we go, that side looks beautiful. Alright, I'm going to do a couple little more things and we'll crank it up. See what the sensors show for this mess here, make sure, well, we won't know about speed sensors until we actually drive it, so that won't, checking for that's not going to help, so but we'll, we'll touch base. Alrighty, so here we are on the uh, left side. Everything is checked out okay yet, and I haven't driven it, so I don't know how this could be uh, auto ride. All that's going to work, so we'll give that a try. But everything seems to be tight. We got everything greased, got everything back together, so we'll give it a drive once we uh, clean up this royal mess. Look at that. Yeah. So there we go. We'll see how it goes. Put the wheels back on and go from there.